Assalamu alaikum and bismillahir rahmanir rahim dear student and we were today we are going to start a new topic and the topic is introduction to wbcs and uh, you all are now very familiar with the process of lipopoiesis and uh, you know that uh, during lipopoiesis we obtained or we have some uh, cells that are called wbcs and uh, these wbcs are neutrophil eosinophil basophil monocyte and lymphocyte now in this lecture uh, we will discuss uh, each cell in very detail uh, on the basis of its uh, structure on the basis of its function and uh, which types of granules they have which color they obtain and uh, what are the importance of these cells my name is tanvir tara and i am lecturer at sarhad university of science and information technology so while starting introduction to wbcs so the term uh, that is white blood cells uh, it's also called leukocyte and uh, the major function of leukocytes or the major function of uh, white blood cells are to protect the body against invasion of extrinsic pathogen and to save the organism and uh, how these white blood cells are formed so these are formed by a special process by a regulatory process and that process is called leukopoiesis and uh, leukopoiesis is then divided into two different uh, lineage that is uh, lymphocytic lineage and uh, myelocytic lineage uh, where lymphocytes are formed so that process is called lymphopoiesis and in which uh, uh, myelite series of form is known as myelopoiesis then ultimately we have five different types of wbcs which have their own function and which have their own importance that's why we are starting this lecture that in very detail we will discuss now one by one today we are going to discuss neutrophil then another lecture we will upload for eosinophil and basophil and so on for monocyte and lymphocyte so we can classify wbcs on the basis of shape and on the basis of granule and on the basis on site of origin and on the basis uh, on their function uh, like uh, uh, when we are going to uh, classify wbcs on the basis of uh, shape of the nucleus so uh, these leukocytes uh, may be divided into mononuclear any and uh, uh, polymorph nuclear white blood cells mononuclear leukocytes have a single non segmented nucleus and uh, this group includes monocyte and uh, various lymphocyte where polymorph nuclear white blood cells have nuclei of varying shape usually these nuclei are divided into number of interconnected segments that are called loops this group includes uh, neutrophil eosinophil and uh, basophil now the second classification that is based on the presence or uh, absence of specific staining granules white blood cells may be divided into granulocytes and agranulocytes and uh, when we are uh, dividing them in two different types so granulocytes and agranulocytes so granulocytes may be further divided by the nature of their specific staining granules into neutrophil eosinophil and uh, basophils compared uh, with uh, granulocytes a granulocytes have very few granule that can be uh, radially stained with specific dyes uh, the latter group include monocyte and lymphocyte and uh, these both are called a granulocytes these are the two different classification one based on the shape of the nucleus that are mononuclear and polymorph nuclear then based on granules there are granulocytes and agranulocytes now on the based of the site of the origin so based on the site of the origin leukocyte may be divided into myeloid and lymphoid white blood cells myeloid leukocyte are those that are produced in the bone marrow this group include all white blood cell except the lymphocyte uh, although we should realize that ultimately all lymphocytes are also derived from the bone marrow most lymphocytes found in the peripheral blood are derived from uh, lymphoid tissues and therefore referred to as lymphoid white blood cell but simply uh, those cells which are originated from lymphoid lineage as called lymphocytes or uh, they are produced by the process of lymphopoiesis and those cells which are produced from the myeloid lineage are called myelocytes uh, sorry are called uh, myelopoiesis and uh, these are all the cells except uh, lymphocytes other classification that is very important and uh, that is on the basis of their function 
and uh, when we are classifying on the basis of their uh, function so white blood cells may be divided into number of categories some white blood cells may be classified as phagocytes is the major function is to engulf and destroying invading pathogens and new plastic cells these are two classes of phagocytes in the blood uh, one is uh, macrophage and uh, uh, other one is microphage monocyte are classified as macrophage and uh, neutrophil are normally referred as ma microphage uh, there are other cell with the uh, phagocytic ability in the blood for example uh, eosinophil uh, but they do not play a major role in the phag phagocytic process uh, other white blood cells are referred to as immunocytes and uh, immunocytes are those cells they play a major role in the specific immune system. Uh, this group include uh, all lymphocytes and uh, macrophages. So here we are going to discuss stages of development as we have discussed it in very detail in our previous lecture but uh, because we are also uh, dealing with uh, this lecture and here we are specifically uh, concerned about the neutrophil so that's why it's a recall for the student the neutrophil is derived from the myelite pluripotent stem cell which commit itself uh, through a common granulocytic monocytic precursor cells uh, to become a committed neutrophil stem cell when this neutrophilic stem cell becomes activated and start to divide it undergoes uh, six different stages of development that are myeloblast promyelocyte myelocyte metamyelocyte band cell or uh, uh, stab cell uh, this is band neutrophil basically and uh, then uh, mature neutrophil and uh, during this time usually about four to five mitotic division take place uh, um, the whole process of proliferation and maturation lasts for about five to uh, six days and uh, these different stages are having different properties like uh, from the beginning the cell size is large and c ratio is high they have open chromatin uh, they have nucleoli they have um, very high uh, mitotic activity and with the passage of time they are going to reduce their size and their first their shape is different and then finally they have a different uh, type of shape so uh, we have discussed it in very detail in the uh, lecture that is uh, leukopoiesis so though for those students who have still not watched that video so kindly watch that video and now we will move on while uh, discussing the regulation of neutrophilic uh, production the student should be familiar with some terms that is uh, granulocytic pool circulating pool marginating pool uh, pmns uh, that is polymorph nuclear uh, cells and uh, first we will discuss that the total granulocytic pool uh, includes two different types of pool that one is circulating pool and uh, the other one is marginating granulocytic pool the granulocytic is used for the neutrophil and the mostly the cells which are circulating in the peripheral circulation that are granulocytes and granulocytes that are neutrophil where uh, overall uh, when we are discussing polymorph nuclear so they also contain uh, eosinophil they also contain basophil but mostly the cells are neutrophil the marginating granulocytic pool consists of granulocytes that have marginated that uh, is attached themselves to the wall of the blood vessels of the microcirculation so from here we have two different types of pool one is circulating pool circulating pool is that pool in which cells all the granulocyte are circulating in the whole body the other one is marginating pool and marginating pool is that pool which is attached themselves to the wall of the blood vessels of the microcirculation and uh, most of these white blood cells are in the process of leaving the circulatory system uh, it's mean that uh, the neutrophil count performed in the laboratory that we are doing a total leukocyte count um, it's only measure the number of cells in the circulating granulocytic pool it's a very important point that when we are doing a total leukocyte count so we are only counting circulating pool not the marginating pool because they are stick uh, to the microcirculation so uh, how uh, regulation occur so there are certain growth factors they, these growth factors are called granulopoietin 
or uh, these are called uh, cytokines but uh, four different types of uh, growth factors are very important in the production of or regulation of the neutrophil uh, like uh, the first one is uh, uh, multi colony stimulating factor it's also called multi csf and uh, this is a non specific growth factor and it's also known as interleukin 3 whenever you are see the regulation process of overall hematopoiesis so interleukin is mostly performed its function in different uh, production or different re regulation process uh, multi colony stimulating factor only uh, acts early in the process of differentiation possibly at the level of pluripotent stem cell uh, but certainly at the level of myelite progenitor cell it is produced by t lymphocytes specifically by helper t cell other one is granulocytic monocyte colony stimulating factor and it's known as gm csf this growth factor is produced by a number of mediator cells including t cells into t layer cells and even fibroblast uh, granulocytic monocytic colony stimulating stimulating factors uh, mimic the many functions of multi colony stimulating factor it also stimulate the development and differentiation of myelite progenitor cells a uh, multi colony stimulating factor can compete with uh, granulocytic monos monocytic uh, colony stimulating factor for its receptors on the development myelide uh, blood cells uh, other one is uh, uh, granulocytic colony stimulating factor and uh, this growth factor is uniquely involved with the development and differentiation of neutrophil gcsf is produced by uh, monocytes macrophages and uh, even fibroblast can produce it uh, other are uh, interleukin 6 and uh, this growth factor appear to be produced by the bone marrow stromal cells it also involved in the development and differentiation of early myelite progenitor cells so the growth factor uh, which have an important role in the regulation of neutrophil production are uh, uh, mcsf gcsf interleukin 3 interleukin 6 and granulocytic colony stimulating factor whenever these growth factor promote the cell uh, promote the hemoblastic activity or myeloblast or they act on myeloblast so then we have finally a mature cell and that cell is called Uh, as i have discussed it uh, earlier that uh, two types of neutrophils are normally present in the peripheral circulation the neutrophilic band cell uh, which is commonly referred as band cell or uh, step cell and the uh, segmented neutrophil uh, which is commonly referred to as polymorph neutrophil uh, we are using polymorph uh, neutrophil in two places uh, whenever we are using pmns so it's mean polymorph nuclear cells and when we are using specifically pmn so we are using it polymorph uh, we are using it for polymorph neutrophil uh, the step cell is considered to be a young neutrophil or it's also called juvenile neutrophil and is similar in structure to the polymorph neutrophil except for the shape of the nucleus uh, both types of neutrophil contain many granules Uh, most of these granules are uh, primary granules uh, and uh, secondary granules uh, uh, secondary or also called specific gr uh, granules and uh, these are 80 to 90% uh, although a considerable number of primary or specific granules are uh, also present and it might be 10 to 20% so free and uh, bound ribosomes are also much less common and um, uh, during electronic microscope or under the electronic microscope analysis reveal that endoplasmic reticulum is not well developed in these uh, later stages of neutrophil maturation and uh, these are indication that uh, little rna and protein synthesis take place in the mature neutrophil uh, similarly the golgi operators seem to be atrophic and uh, atrophic means that Uh, the new granule formation has ceased in the polymorph neutrophil further a uh, few mitochondria are present in these two final stages of the neutrophil series while the glycogen stores of the circulating neutrophil are quite larger and uh, it indicates that the cells have switched from aerobic to mainly anaerobic respiration when they enter the blood stream and how these granules are formed so we'll discuss it in the other slide
so the production of primary or uh, azeotrophic granules uh, okay occurs mainly in the promyelocytic stage of neutrophilic development and uh, further cell division reduces the concentration of these primary granules as they are uh, parceled out to the subsequent daughter cell formation of azeotrophic granules is shown in this picture that uh, mm, the production of primary granules start with the appearance of uh, a dense granule uh, and uh, this uh, dense uh, granule is called uh, dense spherule uh, and here this is cisterni cisterni and uh, you are seeing this is golgi operatus this is cisterni and uh, here a uh, dense spherule is uh, formed in the golgi complex each individual spherule has a diameter of uh, 0.1 micron and uh, once formed these particles are pinched up from the golgi operatus to form a tiny uh, dense cord vacuole here this one it's pinched up from here and now it become dense cord vacuole and uh, whenever uh, this dense uh, cord vacuole is pinched off several of which merge to form a multi cord vacuole like uh, these dense cord vacuole are now multi cord uh, vacuoles and uh, the core material then aggregates and become a multi lobe mass that uh, mm, that is subsequently form a more compact sphere and uh, these uh, vacuolar space surrounding this sphere and uh, then disappears and a mature azeotrophic granule is formed as a result of this whole process so first golgi operators golgi operators create a spherule and uh, then dense core vacuole is pinched off uh, then it produces multi core uh, vacuole and multi lobe form then nuclei then disappeared and here we have mature azeotrophic granule now uh, which types of granules are formed so generally we have myeloperoxidase arginine rich base protein sulfate mucopolysaccharide acid hydrolases and acid uh, phosphatases myeloperoxidase is an enzyme that is present only in primary granule and hence is uh, used as an enzymatic marker to distinguish these granule from secondary granule arginine rich bases uh, basic proteins uh, many of these uh, cationic enzymes are in the form of uh, lysosomes and um, sulfate mucopolysaccharides are compounds contribute greatly to the azeotrophic coloring of the primary granules where uh, acid hydrolases a variety of acid hydrolases has been found in the primary granules of the human neutrophil um, it's also include beta galactosides beta glucuronides uh, monosides uh, aryl sulfatases esterases and uh, acid phosphatases Uh, the latter enzymatic marker has been used to trace the origin of the primary granules to the golgi operators as well production of secondary granules occur mainly during the intermediate stages and um, uh, intermediate stages are uh, myelocyte and myelocytic phases Uh, with the start of myelocytic stages uh, production of primary granule ceases and neutrophilic blast cell switches over to the development of secondary or specific staining granule and uh, since formation of secondary granules continue after the cell stop dividing and uh, these secondary granules continues to increase and uh, then eventually become more numerous than the primary granules uh, the whole process is also taken from the golgi operatus Uh, is uh, uh, that in uh, primary granules and uh, the golgi operatus is also the basic source uh, of these secondary granules these specific staining granules first appear a small structure in the uh, lateral margin of the golgi operatus as uh, here you are seeing this picture and once they have to bud off from the outer golgi cisterni uh, they start uh, budding and uh, then merge to form larger aggregates that further condense forming mature secondary granules uh, its size are now 0.3 to 0.5 micron as well so uh, this is la how the secondary granules are formed uh, it's little bit different from the formation of the uh, primary granules secondary granules uh, are uh, alkaline phosphatases lysosomes amino peptides and uh, collagenase electrophorine as well 
Uh, alkaline phosphatase is a distinctive marker occurring only in secondary granules and is therefore used to distinguish the specific granules from primary azurophytic granules where basic protein uh, that are mainly in the form of uh, lysosome. Lysosome are also present in the primary granules as well. Uh, about uh, here two thirds of the neutrophil lysosomes is in secondary granules and uh, the other third uh, are still in the primary granules where uh, aminopeptides is uh, enzyme that also occur exclusively in secondary granules so these all are about the formation of secondary granules uh, how they form and the formation of the primary granules what is the process how they are pinched off from the Golgi operators a house cistern is formed and then the whole process is take place so during leucopoiesis, not only the cell is going to mature, but also granules are going to mature by this process. So it's all about for uh, today. And uh, we, are, we have started this lecture in a very detailed uh, manner. Uh, so next we will discuss uh, size and shape of neutrophil and uh, then variation in the structure of neutrophil uh, like uh, uh, macro granulocytes uh, hyper segmented neutrophil uh, dually bodies uh, pulgar hue anomaly elder Rayleigh anomaly and shedek hegeshi anomaly and uh, then in the final we will have some morphology of the wbc's uh, as well so thank you very much for listening and uh, keep watching the videos allah hafiz